Hello, this is Katie. Um, I'm going to be showing you the comparison between the Zig Clean Color Real Brush uh, watercolor markers, brush markers. Um, I only have the 24 set. I also have five other colors. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be using them, but I ordered um, five singles through Doodlebugs Washington, Doodlebugs Wa on Instagram. Um, just colors that weren't in the 24 set, and so I'm glad that those are out there. I can just grab kind of the ones I want. Um, and then I have the Arteza set, which came in this box, plastic box. I got them on Amazon. I just haven't put them back in there because I was playing with them. Uh, I liked that there were um, relatively good reviews on them and people on Instagram I talked to who had them and that there were 48 colors. Um, now I didn't know and I just found out that blender pens for this type of brush was a thing. Uh, I don't have the Zig one. I think I want the Zig one. I have already purchased three. This was a two pack, so I actually have two of these. Um, but there, I have three different ones and, um, I'll show you what it does with this. I did only use, no, I used Zig colors. Um, the paper kind of pills up and I don't appreciate it. This is Bristol Smooth, uh, Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock and uh, which is good for the watercolor pens. It works great with the like water and a brush. I'm gonna be using that on these two here. Um, so just to start with, I want to go over, for this example here, I'm only gonna be using the Zig ones. Um, I'm just gonna start off the bat. Zig is my favorite of these two. Uh, they're kind of like, I think, kind of like the Copics of everybody trying to find dupes for these. Uh, if I am wrong and there's even better ones, let me know, but maybe don't because I don't need to buy more markers. Um, so I'm going to use only zigs in this because I want to show you that uh, I didn't know and I just got this. I do like the Lawn Fun Jet Black a little, a little better in the moment than my Memento. Maybe my Memento is just getting old and I need a new fresh pad, but um, I really like the crisp black images. <clears throat> that I'm getting stamped out of the new Lawn Fawn Jet Black. So that's this ink. But this can also handle um, water coloring, which I've been told Memento can't. I actually haven't tried it. Um, but if you've done water coloring on Bristol Smooth with Memento, let me know. I think I might have tried like over a year ago and possibly uh, it bled, but I don't remember. But this says... For use with alcohol-based markers, uh, acid-free, archival, and fade resistant, waterproof, fast drying, and permanent. So the thing I like about this ink is that it's fast drying. This is more of a pigment ink. The Versafine Onyx Black is definitely pigmenty, and it stays wet, which is fine. And normally on Bristol Smooth, I would be sealing this with clear embossing powder and then setting it, which I think is honestly really more fun to watercolor brush in. Um, it's uh, cause you're kind of like coloring within the lines and it just gives you kind of a guide. So I do like sealing it with clear embossing powder. Um, and I'm fine with that if, because when I used this probably the first time, um, I was coloring and I was like smearing the ink with my hand. Uh, and I watched, um, crazy paper chick on YouTube and she had done it and she was all over it with her hand and did not smear it. So I don't know what I did wrong, but maybe, and she didn't even let it dry or like sit to dry. So anyway, I realize that's a lot of information. I'm just going to try not to touch these images. This is a little pea pod from Lawn Fawn Be Happy set. Um, I'll try not to touch these while I do them in case this is still wet. I know this is dry cause this is drying. So that's good. Um, so first, before I do this, I want to go over the differences. So I'm just going to take one of my loose uh, Zig Clean Color. I really like the brush. Um, it's a lot shorter than the Arteza. I will take a similar blue and just show you. The lids are very similar. 
Um, the uh, the uh, brush is much shorter. You have a lot more control with the zig. We'll put the Arteza name upright. Um, and honestly, already on a few of the Artezas, I've trimmed <laughs> the brush at the tip because it was like had a weird one. If it wasn't loose and I could just pull it out, which I've also done about on three different brushes, and I have not used every single one of these, so I'm sure there will be more to do. Um, if I wasn't pulling out a loose bristle, I was trimming the tip because there was one that was stuck in there, but it was like abnormally long, like not, it was longer than this. Um, so I do like the shorter, it gives you a lot more uh, control. This is a bigger brush and it splays out a lot more. I don't really wanna touch it with my finger. Maybe I can show you on here. Um, it'll splay out a lot more uh, than the Zig will. So you do get a lot more control and I think it's just a little bit smoother in general. So I think as far as the ink goes, I think it's fine. This could be a higher quality ink going on. I don't know enough to know the difference at the moment. Um, but the, uh, this, so this basically it's like a physical uh, issue that I'm having with the Artezas. They're just kind of too big and uh, the bristles aren't the greatest quality. I don't know what each bristle is made out of. So there's that. Um, I think they're great for a starter set and if you don't need like super small control of your area or what you're coloring, then you'll be fine. Um, they're very affordable, but I mean, if you're gonna spend money, just get Zigs. And maybe buy the 48 set instead of the 24. These I did with, I believe this was VersaFine Onyx Black. It might have been Lawn Fawn, honestly, but this is Bristol Smooth, probably the Lawn Fawn ink. And I used water. So I was using some different colors and coloring with water. Um, I think there's a lot of like watercolory looking spots like this where it kind of dries like that. Uh, it looks good in the coffee because that's how coffee dries. So I would expect it to look like that. It's not bad. Um, these are from a honeybee coffee stamp set. Um, so those turned out okay. Uh, but as far as the ink goes, maybe that's, I mean, maybe that's part of the ink quality that I'm not quite getting. So on here, I think I'll zoom in a little bit. We'll do the Lawn Fawn side. I'm going to use water and a paintbrush. So I'm just going to, since this is a pea pot, I'll grab a couple greens, probably one of my, my new green. I wonder if those two would be good. Maybe we'll do three. Okay. So I've got May green, which is the one I just picked up. I've got number 41 light green. Um, May's number looks like 47 and then I've got 45 pale green so I think I will do some May green my newer single one this is usually how I color with these I will just kind of put down all the colors you could always add more later and blend more out with water. We'll see how different this light green is from the May green. Not too different, but it's there. And these can also just be blended with each other. You don't even have to use a blender pen. You can just take your lightest pen like you would with a Copic and just blend that out as well. Uh, I just feel like when I do that, there's too much ink going on. And, um, and it, it's like begging for water. So I'm just gonna do it as it's intended. And when I'm watercoloring, if you ever notice, I'm not, I say watercoloring like I'm an artist. Nope, I'm playing with markers. So I do not watercolor. Um, my mom and sister are the artists in the family. I just stamp shit and color it in and pretend to know what I'm doing. So this, I'll dip it in water. I try and get only the brush, so I'm not dealing with a wet barrel, whatever that's called. I'll get the whole brush wet, and then I will just release the water onto a paper towel, and then go from there. So that's how I get rid of the excess water. 
So then here, I will just take from the edge and kind of drag it in. So you're kind of blending out the darker. So this is my favorite way. I don't like water brush pens. This came in the Arteza set. I'm so sorry. So this came with it. I do not like these. It's also way too big and I just don't like them. You have to squeeze them and they drip and then they just leak. That one definitely leaked like out of the barrel. Uh, I don't think the water was flowing like it was supposed to, but I don't like those. You don't have control. I just like using real brushes and by real brushes, I mean a pack of these is like five to ten dollars at Michael's and I used a coupon, so even cheaper. So this I like, and the paper's not pilling too bad. I'm hoping you know what I mean when I say pilling. Um, like you're rolling up the paper and it kind of, you can kind of see it here because I can like brush it away. That also wasn't dry yet, sorry. Uh, but in the light, you can kind of see like the texture of the paper coming up. So in here, I'm gonna show you the blender pen. And since I only stamped one of these to use with the blender pen, I'm only gonna use my favorite blender pen that I got of the three. And it's really just a, <clears throat> again, a physical preference based on the brush type. Um, I'll show you the differences though. So then I have some light. Give it about the same I gave the last one. Get the dark off of there. So this one, I'm gonna show you the three that I got. Um, I have a Koi coloring brush pen, water-based. I'm pretty sure the Stampin' Up blender pen is the same thing as these as well, but anyway. This one's just a little too stiff. <laughs> it's not even a brush, so I'm not gonna use that one. Um, you can't see these in the packaging when you're buying them. This is a Recollections one I got at Michael's. Very cheap, I believe it was like $3.50. Um, blender pen, that's all it says. And this one, again, also stiff. It looks like it may be a brush, but it is not. Um, this one is Artist's Loft. I did grab this at Michael's as well as the Recollections. This, the two pack I got on Amazon for like six bucks. This one was about $2.99, um, but this one is more, a little more give on the brush. It's not bristles like this by any means, but it'll do the job. And it does pick up color, so before you use it for another color, you do have to kind of wipe it off. Um, so I'll show you, I'm just, again, going from the back where the darkest is and bringing this out. I think if this had more of a brush um, consistency on the, the bristles, it might work a little better. It might pill the paper less, I don't know. So this looks okay. Now you can see the difference. I'm going to um, just wipe this off until it's clear. That's all you have to do. Even if it stains the tip, um, it doesn't, you know, it still comes off clear in the end. Most of the color goes away. But so here you can see, just visually see the difference in the blend when it's water and a paintbrush versus just a blender pen. And then also here, um, the paper is pilling up. All those little dark spots there is the paper doing that. Now, what I was doing in the image I wanted to kind of save, or I was really just testing it, um, you can also wipe this off on paper towel. Just take your pen and you can pick up the little pills and then just wipe them off somewhere else. And I would wait for your image to dry before you, um, you know, die cut it or try to cut it out. Uh, I think a die cut in this situation, I know not everybody wants to buy the dies for every stamp set, um, but a die cut is gonna be your best option even compared to like a Brother Scannon cut. When something has been water colored, the paper is gonna be a little more fragile. And if you can straight just die cut it out, like a cookie cutter, um, it's going to not ruin the paper as if like fussy cutting would when you turn and you kind of bend the paper on corners. Um, and the Brother Scanning Cut may not be able to handle that. Um, unless you've done that and it works, then great. 
So I like the blender pen. Um, I still need, I can't find anybody with a single Zig blender pen because they do make one. I just don't own it. And I want to see if this one goes better with its own markers. So I do need to get that blender pen. I think I'll wait till Doodlebugs has it back in stock. Um, she said that more were coming. So that's what those look like. And then this is the VersaFine Onyx Black. I'm just going to use the same uh, greens. Um, now, I honestly don't think this ink situation is going to show much difference from what I just showed you. I'm trying to give this some flicking motion. Um, I think it's paper and watercolor ink. Um, and whether you're using, you know, a blender pen or water. So again, same blender pen. I've gotten the green off of it. I realize we're using the same exact colors, but <clears throat> I want to start with a clean brush just to make sure we get the correct results. So... Again, it blends great. It's just the, the paper pilling is what's going to bother me, I think. Uh, so I think I'll get I'll still get the Zig blender pen, and if that works a lot better on the Bristol Smooth, great. If it doesn't, I will just stick with watercoloring. I'm fine with that. Um, I do just love the Zigs, so I think I will continue on with my collection and pile them up one by one and uh, and then the Ortezas can just be you know backup colors if I need a color and also I mean they're great for just straight water coloring so if you want to take the Arteza pens as like a watercolor set instead and you just scribble these onto a block I also just got this at my local craft store. So you can scribble them in here and then just pick them up with water on your paintbrush and just paint with them. Um, I believe, you know, they're a good set for that because you have a lot of colors and they're very affordable. So you don't have to use the brush itself. You can buy paintbrushes, good affordable paintbrushes. I really like these blue ones. And the whole pack of like four or five was maybe five and a half dollars, I think, maybe eight at Michael's. Um, so I have gotten most of the water out of my brush here and I'm just going to spread the darkest out towards the middle and just go back and forth. And um, I don't uh, usually do this on watercolor paper. I would love to know your experience. I think my only issue with watercolor paper is whether or not you're wetting the paper first or not. If you don't wet the paper, it's like a sponge. It's going to soak it up wherever. But get but to get those really cool, you know, like galaxy backgrounds and things like that when you're coloring in planets and stuff, you want to have it wet already because then your ink is going to go to the wet places and you can splotch things on and dry them as you go. Um... I don't know if VersaFine Onyx Black or Lawn Fawn on watercolor paper would necessarily um, be any better or maybe not pill with the blender pen. Um, I'm just not huge on watercolor paper. So if you have any tips, feel free to let me know down below or tips for anybody else. You guys can go read in the comments. Um, I just wanted to cover my thoughts on basically Zig versus Arteza, the two major watercolor pens that I've seen um, and the difference between using a blender pen, which I just discovered was a thing and a uh, basically just a paintbrush with water. So that is it. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know down below and I will see you guys next time.